Let's play a game of Bomb Blasters. The rules are simple. We have two separate rectangles, each made of some number of squares. On each turn, the active player will take a bomb and choose one of those squares to hit with the bomb. The bomb will also destroy any square that shares a full side with the square hit. For example, if I choose to bomb this square here, not only will I destroy that square, I will also destroy the squares directly to the left, to the right, above, and below it. I will not, however, destroy any of the squares that just shared a corner with the square hit. As another example, if you on the following turn decided to bomb the bottom left corner of the left rectangle, not only would you destroy the corner, you would also destroy the square above it and to the right of it. Here's the puzzle. You go first. We will take turns selecting bombs until all of the squares have been destroyed. The person who destroys the final square will be declared the winner. Your task is to find a strategy that guarantees you the win. And while you think about that, check out some of these cool books that I've written. Today's puzzle is a light application of backward induction, which is found in Chapter 2 of Game Theory 101, the complete textbook. Are you ready for the answer? Okay, here goes. If you begin this game by taking a center block from the leftmost triangle, be it the top one or the bottom one, in this case, it's the bottom one, but it's going to be the same either way. You will guarantee yourself the victory. Why is that? Well, what we need to do from here is work out why no matter what move I take, I am ultimately going to lose from this position. The first step is realizing that the leftmost rectangle has exactly two steps left. So whenever I might go about taking one of those squares, you can always follow that move up immediately by taking the other of the squares. So these things essentially are just canceling each other out. In fact, that discovery greatly simplifies the rest of the analysis. Now what we really need to ask ourselves is if we just have this larger rectangle left, is there anything that I can do, going first on that rectangle, to win? If the answer is no, then we'll have established that the first move that you made of the game allows you to guarantee the victory. And indeed, that's how I went about solving this problem on my own. I first realized that you can force the left rectangle to have exactly three moves. And so if you can also force the right rectangle to have an even number of moves, then you are guaranteeing yourself the victory. That's because you are going first, you have the odd number of moves, and so if there are going to be an odd total number of moves, you win. So from here, we just need to go through every single one of my possible moves and make sure there is an appropriate counter strategy on your part that assures you the final move. Now that might seem like a lot of work because there are 12 blocks remaining. Fortunately, there is a lot of symmetry here, however, and that means that we're going to be able to do this rather efficiently. Let's start with one of the center blocks. Imagine I bomb this one. Then the remaining figure looks like this. Is there anything that you can do from here to guarantee yourself the win? Well, you'll notice that the left two squares are completely isolated. So like before, those moves are going to cancel each other out. And furthermore, you'll notice that if you take the center block on the right, like this, you'll create two more isolated blocks. Which means in the remainder of this game, I will bomb one of them, you'll bomb another one of them, I'll bomb a third one of them, and you will win by bombing the fourth and final one. All told, that means that I cannot win by bombing this center block. 
but you'll also notice that the other center block is symmetric. So the argument that we just made about the first center block applies equally as well to the other center block. Okay, what about the center left block? If I bomb this one, then this figure remains. Do you see a move from here that allows you to guarantee the victory? Well, if you take away the center block, you're left with four isolated squares, which means I will bomb one of them, you'll bomb the second one, I'll bomb the third one, and you'll bomb the fourth one to win the game. Thus, I cannot win by taking the center left square. And by symmetry, I also can't win by taking the center right square. So that means the middle row entirely is incapable of generating me the victory. We're making good progress so far, and it didn't take long. Moving on, what about one of the top center blocks? If I bomb that one, this figure remains. Do you see what you can do with this to guarantee the victory? This one's a little bit more complicated. But if you take the rightmost center block, like that, that will guarantee you the win. Why is that? Well, regardless of which square I choose to bomb from here, exactly two moves remain. If I bomb the top square, then the two squares on the right will be left over, and your final move will remove both of them. If I bomb the corner piece, then just the single square on the right will remain. You can bomb it, and you'll win. If I bomb the center piece on the bottom row, then only the top single square will remain. You'll bomb it, and you'll win. And finally, if I bomb the rightmost square, then the two leftmost squares will remain. You can bomb them, and you'll win. No matter what I do from here, you're destined to win. As a result, we can conclude that choosing that top left center block will not be sufficient to generate a victory for me. But of course, that is symmetric not only with the other top center block, but also the bottom two center blocks. None of those are going to allow me to win the game. And thus, we have only one situation left to consider. Can it be the case that if I bomb a corner piece, I'll be able to win? Well, if I do, we're left with this. Can you see a counter move on your part that will allow you to win from here? This is a little bit more difficult because it requires going through a bunch of different contingencies. However, if you bomb the right center block like this, the remaining figure allows you to win. Do you see why? There's no winning move for me here. If I bomb the center block, then there's just going to be a single square that remains. You bomb it, you win. I also can't bomb the single square all by itself, because if I do that, now you could bomb the center square, and you would win. You would remove all four of these at once. The only remaining option is that I bomb a side square from the larger figure. But if I do that, there's going to be three moves that remain and allow you to win and it doesn't matter which of the side pieces I choose. For example, if I removed this one, that'll take care of the center block as well. You see that we have three non-connecting squares, so you will bomb one of them, I'll bomb the second one, and you'll bomb the third and final one to win. And that's going to be true regardless of which of those side squares that I take. As a result, the corner piece is not going to allow me to win. And by a symmetric argument, neither will any of the other corner pieces. All of these things lose for me. As a result, we have officially concluded that you win the game by taking one of the center blocks from the smaller rectangle to begin. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Take care.